Hello, my name is Kiefer Conyers and I'm a history teacher. I'm posting this video to give you a snapshot of the way I teach my class. There is no way to include everything I do in one video, but I think this video will give you an idea how I break information down and how I try to connect the lesson in a way that makes my students want to engage with me and each other. What you're about to see is a world history lesson I recorded recently. It's the typical way I introduce a new topic. I like to give my students a brief overview and as the week plays out, I see where and how I can improve their understanding. This is my first period class and it's edited down to about 15 minutes. After the video, I have two other classes, fourth and sixth period. Since the lesson is the same, I focus only on the accountable talk for those classes. I want the viewer to notice how each class interacts with each other as they read their essays and respond to each other's questions. I've always found it interesting, and sometimes nerve-wracking, how every class is different. At this point of the year, my students have been working with this version of Accountable Talk for two weeks, so they're still fresh. I hope you enjoyed the video, and I hope to post more in the future. Thanks for viewing. So once again, what we're looking at is uh, totalitarianism, and we're looking today now at Nazism. Okay? Uh, the question is, was the rise of Nazism due mainly to German areas? There's some questions we've got to ask ourselves about that before we get into it. What does it mean to be arrogant? When you describe somebody as arrogant, what are you saying? Mean self-absorbed. We gotta break self-absorbed down for us because some of us don't know. What does that mean? Self-absorbed. There you go. You only think about yourself and care about yourself. You are mean, self-absorbed. Now, at the top of this page, what we have is objective. Okay, this is something that the state wants us to cover. As you know, um, what they want us to do is analyze the assumption of power by Adolf Hitler in Germany and the resulting acts of oppression and aggression of the Nazi regime. Only thing I'm going to focus on is is the first part. We're, we're going to look at this part right here. Okay? Analyzing the assumption of power by Adolf Hitler in Germany. That's the only job that we got today. Now, Adolf Hitler, you call the leader of which country? He was the leader of Germany. That's correct. Okay, He was the leader of Germany. Now, do you remember who was the leader of Soviet Union? We know he wasn't the dictator of Soviet Union. Who was that? What was his name? Uh oh, come on, come on, come on, come on. You remember that? Uh, Had the purge. Yeah. What was his name? Stalin. Stalin was his name. Good job. Anybody remember the leader of Italy? Stalin. M. Mussolini. Good job. Now, well, Hitler looked up to him, and Hitler came up with this idea that was similar to his, but he applied it to Germany. He called it Nazism. He said, love your people, love your country, or you will die doing it. If you are not German, poor, pure blood, you will die. All right? If you come into our country and you try to take something from us, you will die. And that's what we're going to be looking at right now. How does this man assume power? How does he get everybody to think like that? Kill anybody who doesn't look like you. Kill anybody who doesn't come from where you come from. How do you get people to think like that? We'll be using this document here. I'm going to give it to you in just a second. Now, this document gives all the information you need to answer your question, whether or not the Germans, because they were arrogant, because they were mean, because they were self-absorbed, whether or not that's the reason why the Nazis, who told everybody, hey, anybody who's not like you, write them out. This is going to give us all the information we need. Now, here's the thing, though. On your crossword, this is up here, same thing on crossword. Crossword doesn't tell you which source you got to use. You can use the source number one or source number two. After a while, you do enough of it, you'll figure it out. If y'all would, let's go on and take a quick look at number, number three across. We're going to look at three across. Okay, the Weimar Republic failed to survive in the blank crisis of the country. So, my question to you is, what's the answer to that? The Weimar Republic failed, and it's the exact same wording as it is on your uh, source sheet. Tell me, which is the answer to that? Yes, ma'am? Economic crisis of the country. Okay, you see how that goes? And what, which paragraph do you find? One, two, or three? And two, all right? All right, let's look at number one down. Okay, can I get someone to read that one for me, please? Number one down. Number one down. Yes, sir, thank you. The Germans hated the treaty of 
That's Versailles. It's French. Versailles. Versailles because it was used East White Cow. All right. So anytime you see the Germans hate it, I try to make it to where you know. Here's your source. All right. So it reduced their what power? Yes, ma'am. Good job. We got military power. And I think it was, where do we have that? Right here, the German. Okay, does everybody understand how to use it? All right, so you guys go ahead on. You're gonna have only 15 minutes. When the time goes off, it means you got about five more minutes left. If you got a question, let me know. What's up? What's that? Yeah, you can use your group members. Yes, please use your group members. Thanks across, anybody get that one? No? You got one? Okay, so read it for me. Tell me, go ahead. All right. Massive fines for war damages. What war just ended? 1919. Remember, what war just ended? Yeah. World war At World War I, Germany had to pay all of these fines back. All right? All of this damage, they said they hated it. Does this, in your opinion, make somebody arrogant? If somebody told you you had to pay some money back because you tore something up, does that make you sound arrogant? Yes or no? Oh, okay. Well, it's not bad. All right. Why not? Okay, you would ask them, right? Somebody tell you stuff up, you would ask them. All right, so let's see here. All right, somebody give me another one. What else you got? Give me one that you think makes them sound arrogant. That's one that says, nah, they don't sound mean. They don't sound like they think of themselves. Give me something else that makes it sound like they are thinking only of themselves. Anybody got one fact like that? One fact like that it makes it sound like, yo, these people right here, they arrogant. You got one from Miss Clark. Go ahead. Okay, 13. Is that across again? All right, 13 across it here. Not bad. So how does that make that sound Nazis? Believing that Germany is the greatest. Tell me how does it make it sound so arrogant to you? Ah, okay, damn it, because it were popular. Go ahead, tell me a little bit more. Go ahead. That's not bad. It became popular. She's thinking it sounds arrogant because it became popular. Nazism became very popular. Believing that you are the best, that you're better than every other country became popular primarily to because of who again? Whose actions was it? The Nazis' actions, okay, or Hitler's actions, the leader of the Nazis. But your job is this. Your job is to find one fact, one fact that proves whether or not you think the Germans were arrogant or not. First, uh, our goal, okay, and this is something that they just want to make sure that you know. Our question versus the state objective. Bless you. What is the connection? I'm saying that Adolf Hitler in Germany assumed power because of what? And this under my part. Germans' arrogance, right? That's what I'm trying to get you guys to see. Then he gave power because Germany was arrogant, because they were self absorbed, because they were mean, all right? And your job is to agree or disagree with that. So, on the side, let's do our sexy paragraph. We agree or disagree, all right? That the rise of Nazism was due mainly to German arrogance. All right, so as you finish up writing that sentence, the explain part, we have to figure out, okay, in order for someone to understand why I said what I said, what words do you think, give me one word you think you would have to define up there for them to understand what you're talking about. Arrogant. Say it again? Arrogant, right? So we got arrogant. So you can explain what arrogant means, or Nazism, all right? Depends, I mean, as we go, you're going to learn more about Nazism. And it's an example, okay? Don't forget, we got to talk about a time frame. If anybody remember the time frame, it's still the same as last week, 19 what? 1920s or 1930s, roughly so. The uh, next one, 1920s, 1930s, one of your quick facts. One of your quick facts, all right, that shows, approves, or supports how you feel about it, okay? And don't forget, tell me why you're using that fact, all right? Make sure you tell me why you're using that fact. Okay, so our last one here we're looking at is the importance, all right? And we're just trying to say essentially, you know, because of German, it just depends on what you said. This is all you. Maybe you talked about the German arrogance. Maybe you talked about Nazis. Maybe you talked about Hitler. But essentially, because of whatever you said, we uh, we're dealing with what the or we see a shift. We see a change in what the and then explain to me like a lot of people that say this is important because it helps us understand what. What does it help us to understand? All right. So first, don't forget to say S. Read your S. You know how to do it, right? 
Read it nice and loud so no one's asking again. On your papers, would y'all please put S-E-X side down the side, just real quick underneath your paragraph? Because what I want you to do is jot down a word that you might hear that you like, you gotta explain that to him, and just make sure you put it in the section that he said, it, all right? That way he doesn't have to reread it and we get more points out, all right? So S-E-X-I, or just write down that word so that he'll know, all right? Go ahead, read it for me. You got one minute to read, two minutes to participate, go ahead. Yes, I agree that the rise of nation Nazism. Nazism was due mainly to German arrogance. E arrogance means to be self selfish, self absorbed, and care only about yourself and what you believe. H for example, Hitler promised to build a strong nation, revoke the injustice of the Versailles Treaty, and reestablish the self respect of the German people. This resulted in the Nazis becoming popular during the 1920s. I, essentially because of Hitler's arrogance, we saw a major shift in power. This change was important because it helps us to understand what leaders, that leaders show favoritism. <coughs> All right, so we have any questions here? We have any questions? All right, give about a minute or so. You want to start by saying, I'm not sure I understand you when you say the Germans were arrogant. Uh, with your example, could you explain that to me again? Don't forget to say it right so I can give you points. Go ahead. Let's say for X, for example, if you promised to build a strong nation, revoke the injustice of the Versailles Treaty, and reestablish the self respect of the German people, this resulted in the Nazis becoming popular during the 1920s. I said that because he was just saying like he wanted to reestablish the self respect of his country and his country only. He didn't really care about the black people. Ah, so it's not a good, not a bad point, okay? Kind of reflecting what Nazism is about. Self-respect in this country. And I can't mind anybody else. Anybody else got a question over there? Got a question, got a question, got a question. Okay, go ahead. Quailin's got it. Quailin's up. All right, Quailin, let's see yours. I disagree with the rise of Nazism or Jewish. Speak up a little louder for me, go ahead. I disagree that the rise of Nazism was born in the country. I disagree. Germany definitely do you disagree with that? Anybody have anything to say on that? Anybody? What my question is is this. Uh, I, I say um, I'm, I'm confused. I don't understand how you can say that Germans were not um, selfish. Alright? Did they not, not want to pay back money to countries that they had destroyed? Defined? Please explain to me how someone is not selfish if they don't even want to pay back money that they should have paid back anyway. Anybody can help out now. Anybody can help out. I'll give you points for it. To show that, look, they still selfish. Look what else they did. You got one, Miss Clark. Go ahead, take it up. Ah, uh, did you have to accept blame? And then tell me, why does that put in your head like that? Hey, they kind of self absorbed. What did they feel about accepting blame? They what? They don't like the truth. They don't like the truth. They said we have to accept blame and then we don't like the truth. Okay, so how it goes is this. I need you to please, on your box, first make sure your name is down here. Your name, date, class, period. I need you to put the top box, I need you to put group six. Number six up here. Next one is group eight, and the last one is going to be group three. Now, if we don't get all of the group three, that's okay. He's going to get printed just right. Six, three, eight. So, I need y'all to please make sure you pay attention to how you ask your question, all right? Ask it the way it shows on here. If you disagree, I disagree with group, whatever group you're talking to, because, and then tell me why you disagree with them. 
something from your sheet, all right? If y'all would, please put S-E-X-I right underneath your paragraph, put S-E-X-I. As they read, they're going to say S, and they're going to read it. E, read it. X, read it. I, read it. And if you hear something you don't like, or you say, look, I don't, please write it down. If they say something in X, the example, write it down real quick. I don't care. Just jot it down so that when you ask them a question, you can say, hey, I don't understand what you meant by this. Could you explain it to me again? And you can tell them what part it was in. That was going to happen one time, okay? Do you have any questions? Any questions about what's about to happen? This car is reading first. Don't forget S and then read it. Read it loudly so everybody can hear it, okay? You got one minute to read. You got two minutes to participate. Go. Okay. <laughs> if um, I say I agree that the rise of a Nazi Nazis Nazi yeah. was due mainly to Germans arrogance. 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 Yes. <laughs> Go ahead. Arrogance means having too much confidence in yourself. Good. E, for example, um, during the 1920s and 1930s, Germany had no Air Force or modern weapons. This caused them to have hatred towards Trinity of President uh, um, Trinity of Versailles. Versailles. Good. Important, essentially, hatred caused a major shift and deals with culture. See, I think it's culture. All right, see. All right, so anybody have any questions for her? Any questions? Raise your hand so I get your points. I jotted mine down as you went. Any questions? That's what we got. Don't forget to reference to her. And don't forget, hey, Beyonce, you want to make sure you ask them like this up here, okay? We got a minute and 58 seconds. 60 seconds, go ahead. Oh, okay. 60 seconds, I don't understand why you can't coach the pizza. Come on, Beyonce. Yeah, okay. yeah, I got you. All right, so tell me, that's a good question. Go ahead. So why does how does culture connect to the <laughs> Indian area? Go ahead. Class, keep it quiet, please. Go ahead. Because um, it is a, um, how they eat and they got so much company in So you're going to tell you about some of the actions. Okay, so that's not too bad. And don't forget, you're just trying to get her, you know, explain her answer a little bit more. Ain't got to be just perfect, but that was pretty decent. Anybody else got a question? I have a question for you in a little 18 seconds. Tell me this. You said that you explained arrogance is having too much confidence. But then you said something about the Treaty of Versailles, how they hated that. How is them having too much confidence in hating the Treaty of Versailles? How did you connect it to? Why would you use the Treaty of Versailles as an example of them having too much confidence? Give me one reason why. Because they all. Um, <laughs> That's okay. You just try your best. Oh, because they all. Um, I guess they these guns, the weapons, complete them. Oh, not bad. Okay, got you. So you're saying the weapons they had completed them, and what did the Treaty of Versailles do? They, they, um, a lot of them. Okay, so I go. We got uh, Vincent is next. He has one minute to read, and start now. Go. I, yes, I disagree that, I disagree that the rise of Nazism was due mainly to the German areas. Nazism to me means Germany or Germans. Basically it means this country is for our people and no one else. It, for example, during the during the nineteen twenties and thirties, the Germans just wanted to rebuild their country after the war. This caused people to think they were arrogant people, but they were they really not. Essentially because of Hitler and Nazism, this caused a major shift in power. This helps us to understand this helps us to understand that the Germans were misunderstood about how they were. All right, so here we go. Ten, please. All right, so we got questions. Go ahead. We got Xavier first. Xavier. <laughs> 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 they were trying to take away some of the Germans' power by taking away their military. But he had there. He got well, he became a He made them more popular, which gave them more power. Yes, I agree that due to the rise of Nazism was due mainly to German arrogance. As arrogance, I mean, think about they think about they're better than everyone else. X. For example, during the 1920s and 1930s, Hitler influenced the German soldiers 
on why German was so great. This resulted in Nazis having a feeling of being cocky and have pride in their country. I essentially because of Hitler's persuasion, this caused a major shift in power. This change was important because it helps us understand why persuasion and power is so great that it helps lead the country. So that's not bad. We got two minutes. We got two minutes. If you didn't hear something, raise your hand and ask. We got very good. Okay. Um, <clears throat> I don't understand. I would think about what Caitlin said. I was wondering what it would be. Like you said, like Hitler would make Germany great. Yeah, that's persuasion. Okay, so how did they make me great? They made all the wars and What do we mean by great is what I meant, like. You know, especially you speak of. Hitler, Hitler used persuasion. Like, he gave the reason why Germany was so great and how they took pride in their country. Okay. So, anybody else? Any other takers on that one? Yeah, good job. Anybody else? We got anybody else who wants to step it up? All right, so I got a question for you. You still got 60 seconds on yours. Look, I, I, I don't understand your E. Would you read that again for me, please? Yes, arrogance, I mean. They think they are better than everyone else. They think they're better than everyone else. And you're saying that they don't think, you think that's a misunderstanding, or do they really think that they're better than everybody else? They actually think they're better than They actually think they're better than everybody else. So could you tell me how your example proves that one more time, please? Let me read my example. Yeah, just tell me. Just so you can break it down. That's fine. You got the 20 seconds. Women like Hillary. <laughs> Women, but Hillary was gone. He, since, since he was a, such a powerful speaker, he gave he gave examples on why it was great, or he would say that he would make German German great. Okay, and, so and then you got. Uh, oh, okay. Go ahead, got you. Go ahead. So you say that his powerful speaking made him great. I yeah, got it you. influenced people. Hey, definitely. So you saying his influence over people, him being a German. I understand that one. Okay, so I appreciate it. All right, so we got, uh, now she had to go get a drink of water before she could read. Julio, would you like to go ahead on and do your thing? No, I'm not done with it. Uh, how you read your hand, man? I thought you were finished. All right, you know, she's going to read hers. Listen carefully. We got ourselves uh, just about another few minutes. Go ahead, man. Hey, I agree that the rise of Nazism was a little mainstream during the So we got a minute and 50 seconds. We have any takers? Yeah. I don't. Well, one ten, excuse me. Go ahead, there. I'm not sure I understand what you're saying. You're the better person. Can you say it more about me? I say, I'm not sure I understand what you're saying. Who the game is greatest person? Can you say more about me? Okay. Well, we said. Why do you think he had a good, strong impression? Why do you think he has a great impression? Oh. Yes. Oh. No, you can help her out. That's fine. You can help her out within the group. I think what she means is that Hitler. What? <laughs> that Hitler was such a powerful speaker and influenced other people. Anybody else got another question? Raising your hand. Anybody else have another question? We got 30 seconds. Um, Hitler, he promised to make the nation stronger and reestablish self respect in Germany. Alright, so that was just an agreement, right? Gotcha. And we got another one. Hey, I don't know. Yeah, we got another one. Alright. Well, look, 
you, you did pretty good. Can I ask you one question, Miss? Miss, I was looking at yours and you said the example, mm -hmm. and you were talking about it being popular, right? You said that the Nazism became very popular. Now, do you think that Nazism being so popular, and you know Nazism uh, means a German for the Germany for the Germans, right? How does that make you brave when you take and you push everybody else out? How does that make you brave? Anybody can jump in. It's hell. You already got your points. There, you got your points. Anybody else? I want somebody else to maybe help Rob and say, hey, how can you make yourself, how can you seem great if you're trying to push people out? Think about it now. Think about yourself. If you say, look, I'm a great person because I push people out. Who are you pushing out? To sit back and say, I'm great. Well, yes. There you go. There you go. You got the negative people. So today, you can always say something like that. You can say, well, look, Hitler, he made Germany great because he pushed out the people that were trying to what Germany? To make it bad. To make it bad or hurt Germany, right? So we got that type of thinking right there. So uh, that's not bad, all right? Even if I come at you, it's not because I'm saying something because I want to trip you up. I know you can figure it out. Now, it doesn't necessarily mean she was right, but you can always, you know, think quick on your feet. I'm pretty sure you guys are going that's what you're about to do too, right? And that's good. All right, so and I do that, so I want to bring everybody else in. If y'all would, good job. I need you to please uh, turn.